Joelle Gerges, thank you very much for joining me this morning. You're a researcher in climate change and also uh, an author. Uh, what got you interested in the climate? Well, I've been really fascinated with the natural world for a really long time, but in particular, I was really interested in trying to reconstruct drought in Australia because our understanding of drought really only begins in 1900. Uh, where we have the Bureau of Meteorology's official records. And so I was interested in getting a sense of what happened beyond that. So how? How, how do you go back beyond the actual record to figure out what it was that happened? So it turns out when the first fleet actually arrived, there were a lot of people on board who actually had um, scientific instrumentation. So things like thermometers and barometers to measure air pressure and things like that. So um, our earliest weather record was actually um, uh, developed in 1788, it was actually kept in 1788. But beyond that, we've also got um, records from the natural world, so things like tree rings and corals and ice cores, and they provide us with centuries of information. So if you put all that information together, you can start to reconstruct our climate. Now, you found another way of getting some climate information as well, not just from things like you know, core, ice core samples and, and coral rings and, and even those ship's logs from the First Fleet. You also found some information in art. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I can. And so um, there are actually some artists who were on board the First Fleet as well. And there are some incredible watercolour paintings all the way back to 1788. William Bradley was actually a prolific artist. Um, and sometimes, just like the way we take photographs today of important events, they would take, they'd actually sketch something out or paint something. And later on in, in the 19th century, the, with the development of photography, there's some really interesting um, things like like um, floods of the 1893 in, in Brisbane, where um, you can actually see with your own eyes what actually happened. And I think the stories behind those images are really important. And that was, that was also some of the guiding, um, that guided me a little bit in, in my work. Right, so, so you're able to use that, that artwork and, and draw extra information out of it regarding the climate. That's, that's amazing. Now, you must have a, a really keen insight into what natural variability in Australia looks like. Mm. What's your take? My take is that we've always been the, loud, the, the land of drought and flooding rains. We know that, everybody knows that. But since 1850, where we've had the industrial revolution and we've been um, burning fossil fuels at a really fast rate, we've actually altered the chemistry of the atmosphere and the ocean in a way that now makes the climate system behave differently. And so what that means is that all of our natural climate cycles are actually occurring on the background of a warming planet. And so what that does is actually play out with more extreme weather and climate. So natural variability on steroids, if you like, is a, is a way of thinking about it. Right, so looking back, uh, comparing that to now tells us about what's changed, but it also gives you some insight into what else is going to change. What do you as a climate researcher expect for the future? So my colleagues at the CSIRO and the Bureau of Meteorology have done a lot of work at the climate change projections, which tell us a bit about future climate. And typically for Australia, we're looking at about four degrees of warming around the country. Inland areas are hardest hit, and, and we can actually see um, over five degrees of warming in some, some inland areas on, on current sort of um, worst case scenario tra trajectories, if you like. But it depends on what we do in terms of whether we reduce our emissions and we can avoid some of the more dangerous aspects of climate change or whether we, we carry on as we are. And what do you think it is that we are going to have to do? Well, look, I think it's really important to realise that Australia is actually experiencing a lot of climate extremes, things that we might not have expected to see till a lot later on in the century. So for instance, we just saw mass bleaching of the, of the Great Barrier Reef, where now about 50% of all the corals on the Great Barrier Reef have actually um, been killed by uh, um, underwater heat waves, if you like. And so that's something which we wouldn't have expected to see so soon. And so we have to understand that we are seeing climate change right now. It's already with us. And what we do right now is also really important in terms of putting the brakes on. So the degree of climate change that we experience is very much um, in our hands. So you've managed to get all of this down into just a few pages. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Yeah, so I think my book is really about, um, it's, it's our first time that we've been able to pull together our climate history. Uh, so it's a big job, um, but it's a book written for every Australian. It really is a book that I hope speaks to people that are just interested in climate change, um, but you don't need to be a scientist to read mm. it. I want to be really clear on that. There's lots of artwork in there and lots of great stories, 
but it, it's also um, it's our story. It really is. A, it's a story that I think that I hope everyone can relate to and might find a little piece of their own story in there. And you know, Australians love their weather. Joelle Gerges, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, tell you what, it was a delightful read. Can't wait to read it again. Thank you very much, Nate.